Finalysis has shifted to football season, and with your fantasy drafts around the corner, you're going to want to figure out how to navigate drafting handcuff running backs. So let's bring in a sports handicapper and analytics expert. You can find him on Twitter as Old Man Who Bets. Jeff Sheesby in studio once again. All right, handcuffing running backs. Now, a handcuff is a backup running back that's likely to take over in case of injury. And considering all the injuries we see in the NFL, it's a very important part of your draft. So do you like picking those handcuff running backs based on the running back you drafted in the first round? I'm pretty hit or miss when it comes to handcuffs in both life and, and fantasy football. <laughs> You know, to me, a handcuff, it, there's just too much variance on what can potentially happen here. Uh, you know, we're looking at potential injuries, fine, but the handcuff situations are often super unclear. We look at Dallas a couple years ago, Zeke goes down, is it Alfred Morris, is it Darren McFadden, is it Rod Smith? Right. And that changed week to week. Uh, so I don't necessarily want to invest a, uh, you know, a draft pick on that. And I mean, it happened in Denver last year as well. I mean, exactly. everybody thought it was going to be Royce Freeman, and it ended up being Philip Lindsay. Yeah, Philip, who exactly? And he was great, but nonetheless, I'm not trying to spend a sixth, seventh, eighth round draft on that when I can get a backup running back or you know, a, a, a RB three, uh, somebody like Tariq Cohen, Eckler, uh, you know, Juice, maybe Jordan Howard, a guy that's going to see the field. Uh, I would rather spend my money on, on those guys. But nonetheless, let's talk about some top handcuffs. Right. I was going to say, so the, the, the key here is that you don't necessarily want to overvalue your handcuff mm -hmm. and put him in the same mix as like the Cohens and, and some of those mid-round guys. But if, say, 14, 15, that guy's still available, I'm going to go ahead and grab that guy. It'll yeah, yeah. The deep bit. rounds, if you've got a 20-man or a 20-person roster, you can have that kind of extra spot. But as you said, it's all about opportunity costs and finding value who are going to give you guys week-to-week -week value for 16 weeks. And we're seeing those handcuffs have some valuable roles. Last year, James Conner was mm -hmm. a handcuff. Aaron Jones was a handcuff. Latavius Murray came on at the end of the season as well, and they all exceeded those handcuff expectations so right. who do you see making that jump this year yeah and, and to your point about those guys most of those guys were still available on the waiver wire which yeah. is also an interesting interesting piece to this so again don't necessarily need to take that draft pick but guys I'm targeting this year uh, starting is, is gonna be Ito Smith uh, he's going around in the 14th round right now he's been averaging four point yards uh, per carry uh, logged four TDs last year and he catches the ball pretty well he had 27 catches for 152 yards uh, more importantly we look at a guy like uh, Mr. Freeman you know he's been hurt for the last couple years usually backed up by Coleman Coleman is no longer in Atlanta somebody's got to get those carries uh, and right now I feel pretty okay about Ito Smith getting them I, I know the issue with Freeman obviously he got banged up but when he is healthy you know he puts together amazing numbers mm -hmm. and and on top of this the, uh, the the Falcons just named Brian Hill the third string running back right. the camp MVP maybe that was just a confidence booster Could but it been. also makes you a little nervous about you know which way you want to go with somebody yeah, like and that. that goes back to the, the handcuff situation being very unclear yeah um, is it Ito Smith probably but probably not and then the savvy waiver wire guy picks him up in week 10 and you've been holding a guy for nine weeks getting you zero points I feel like for the past five years Duke Johnson has been a handcuff that everybody's like, oh, no, no, this is the year Duke this Johnson's going to be the guy. Duke. No, 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 it didn't work out last year, but I promise you, Duke is going to run wild this year. Yeah, Duke's the guy. I like Duke a lot. You can get Duke right now for about an 11th round pick. Um, you know, he's obviously backing up Lamar Miller. Uh, Lamar Miller had a good year last year, but if we look at his, his 2017 year, very pedestrian. It was 3.7 yards per carry. Uh, I think, obviously, the their kind of rejuvenated offense has really helped him out. But Duke's a guy that I think can actually see some time as a third down back. And PPR leagues, I think he gets some immediate value, assuming he is, you know, taking that third, uh, that third down back position. And thus, you know, Lamar Miller being somewhat pedestrian, maybe not as explosive as he was, maybe Duke finally finds his stride in Houston. I don't know, but again, for a, a late round flyer, I'd, I'd be willing to, you know, especially, to give it a go. Yeah, especially somebody like Lamar Miller, who, you know, sometimes he can stay relatively healthy, but mm -hmm. when he goes down, he's not someone that ends up coming back healthy when he, you know, when, uh, when, when the doctors clear him to play. Right. So it seems like Duke might end up having more of an opportunity in Houston than he ever would have in Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, Especially with agree. all the receiving options in Cleveland. Yeah, all of a sudden Cleveland's <laughs> got the uh, the most hyped offense in the league. <laughs> right, so right. I think Duke's happy to have gotten out of there. I know there was some uh, some politicking going on in the preseason. Uh, so I think the, the Texans definitely got some great value with him for next to nothing. I think they moved like a, maybe a fourth round pick right. uh, the next couple years for him. So well, I'm hoping Duke is way more valuable than what the Texans <laughs> got for him uh, and hopefully can make a little bit of noise on your fantasy team this year. Well, that's the thing with handcuffs, you know. We're taking chances with any of these handcuffs and 
and you just have to make sure that you back up some of the big name guys if you get that chance. That's a look at our must have handcuffs for the draft. Don't forget to check out our other segment on best future bets this season. For Jeff Sheesby, I'm Steve Overmeyer. This is Finalysis.